hi hi you know what I've waited all week to say this and now I can say it happy Friday <laughs> I've tried to say it at least two times that I know of right and now I can actually say it happy Friday happy Friday it actually is Friday this time hi Suzanne how are you <sighs> How are we doing, you guys? Oh, I'm so glad to see you guys. Welcome in, welcome in. Good morning, Sylvia. How are you doing? Hey, how's the audio? I wiggled it ahead of time. <laughs> Did it turn out okay? Do I need to wiggle again? Just let me know. I think it's okay. Wiggle? I'll wiggle. You got it. Gave it a wiggle. How's the wiggle now? <laughs> are we better? Are we good? Oh my gosh! You guys! It's Feel Good Friday. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I'm excited about this project uh, for several, several reasons, but I'm also excited because it's Friday. Last night, we did the um, the Jewel Loom workshop for the, um, do I need to wiggle again? I'm going to give it a second because I know there's a little bit of a delay. Wiggles, some more wiggles. <laughs> Let me know if I need to wiggle again. Um, but last night we did the Jewel Loom workshop and it was two hours. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun, but man, it was two hours. And so I have this knot in my, like right behind my shoulder blade on the right side from where I had my head down for two hours. Oh gosh. So when I woke up this morning and I got out of the bed and it was like, oh, 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 <laughs> you know that like every movement you're like, oh, I feel that. Oh, and I didn't know I was hurting there. <laughs> I had one of those mornings. So <laughs> I'm doing better. I took some leave. I'm doing a little bit better. But yeah, two hours with your head down is a long time, you guys. So it's Feel Good Friday. Hooray, hooray. And um, we're doing a fun project because that's what Feel Good Friday is all about. Feel Good Friday is all about doing easy things that are fun that we can use as inspiration to go into the weekend or to, you know, just use later or not or whatever. <laughs> it's just easy peasy, feel good, fun jewelry. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And we're doing something that I love. We're gonna play with patinas. I love patina paints. And I actually have a huge, well, it's not a huge collection, but I got a big collection of patina paints and alcohol inks, and I always forget about them. And I'm always reminding my friends when they're like helping me like think of projects to do, they'll mention patinas and I'm like, ooh, remind me of that again. Remind me of that again, because I always forget. But that's what we're doing today. We're going to be using some patinas. I've got the verdigris, which is like a, you know, it's it's like a turquoisey color. And then I pulled out the aged bronze, which is really kind of counterintuitive considering that we're working on like bronze colored metal. But I don't know. We'll play with it and see. One of my favorite things about them though is that they have a shaker ball in them. I've actually said that before and I, I it bears repeating just because simple minds, simple pleasures, I suppose. But I love... It's like spray paint. It has that shaker ball in it. I love that so much. I don't know why, but like all paint should have that. <laughs> Makes me feel like a rebel. Like I'm gonna, oh, this one doesn't have it. Oh, that's just sad. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm gonna spray paint something in like cause a ruckus, I guess. Oh no, it has one. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna use some pieces of uh, just brass stuff that I ordered. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but a long time ago when we very first started doing these Facebook Lives on Fridays here on Sarah Ellis Designs, I was looking for metal pieces like filigrees and just fancy metal pieces like which you can always get at Vintage, right? And I wanted, I wanted like a bulk supply so being the Amazon shopper that I am, I went onto Amazon and I found these bulk supply bags of these filigree pieces in like different shapes and colors. And so I'm gonna mix those in with some actual vintage pieces, but I got these guys. I'm just gonna use one of them, but I pulled two out just in case we ruin the first one, <laughs> which is always a possibility, you know? When you play with patinas, you never know what's gonna happen. So if the first one turns into a hot mess, we'll, we'll, we'll work on a second one. But 
it's fairly thin stuff right which is you're supposed to be able to like bend it around things and all of that but i'm actually going to use this as the backer for a pendant so this is going to go behind these little birds that i've got so i have these two swallows i've got one these are both from vintage one is in this beautiful brass color and one is in the antique brass color and i thought that hanging in front of this piece like we'll add the vintage to this and then hang the bird in the front and then maybe do some little um, bead dangles um, that that would be really pretty and then I've got some antique brass chain this was this is chain from Beadalon and um, just some chip beads because I feel like people struggle with chip beads like what do you do with your chip beads I have a ton <laughs> Like, and I have an excessive amount of chip beads and I've just picked them up from people along the way. I've given away almost as much as I still have. Um, and it's because I don't know what to do with them. You know, they're, they can be very difficult to design with. So we're going to use some chip beads. Look at the ones that I have. <laughs> that is bag. It looks like cereal. It looks like blue cereal. I... <laughs> And I honestly don't even know what this is. I believe this is howlite that's just been dyed because it's certainly not a whole bag of turquoise. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting right here if this were a whole bag of turquoise. I can tell you that right now. I'd be designing some fabulous runway jewelry. Um, but <laughs> I believe that that's what this is. I don't know. I have... A, a huge bag of it so we're gonna play with that I pulled out some red coral beads maybe to just add a, um, a pop of different color I don't know but um, we're also gonna be uh, using the findings that are antique brass if you struggle to find findings that are antique brass or just in colors in general other than gold and silver uh, Beetle has these little handy findings variety packs that I absolutely love and you can get these in the antique brass rose gold which is really hard to find rose gold findings in like a, a quantity of more than just one or two at a time um, so antique brass rose gold silver gold hematite and I feel like there's one more but I there's not a I don't think there's a, an antique copper one I think I got them all Anyway, they come with a lot of stuff in them. They, they've got like various sizes of jump rings and you've got two different kinds of clasps in here. And some of them come with uh, crimps. Some of them do and some of them don't. <laughs> Beetle on coffins. <laughs> Why do you crack me up? <laughs> that is what they look like. But they're super cool because they've got everything in them and you just open them and then snap them closed. And they're so small that you can throw them like in your bag. I have a bag that when we were you know meeting people in real life instead of virtually when we would go to do um, bead classes or for the bead society meetings I always threw these in my bag with my tools because they're just handy you know they don't take up a lot of space and I don't have to pack them individually so um, they last a really long time too so this is where I get my antique brass findings from okay um, just if you're if you're on the market for these you can get these over on the Beetle on website um, and like I said they are one of the very few places where I know that you can get rose gold findings in like you know more than just like four lobster clasps at a time so it's definitely worth worth checking out they also have chain like I said I don't know if they have this exact chain I've had this one in my stash for a really long time but Beetle does have an assortment of chains so you can go over to the Beetle on site and literally get everything except for the beads right you can get everything that you need tools findings chain leather whatever you need and then you just use your own beads from your stash which is super cool um and yeah these guys i will look to see i bought these forever ago on amazon i'll look and see if i still have the link to these when i bought them because it's definitely worth sharing i've got an amazon affiliate link and i didn't even think to um put this link for these put my affiliate link for these in um, the description of this event but i will put them um, in the group okay so that you guys if you're interested in, in grabbing like a, a ton of these little finding things I keep shaking them at you <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with them um, I'll give you the link for those because it was more than just this shape there were a ton of them all right so 
Feel Good Friday. Yeah. Before we get started with today's Feel Good Friday project, though, while I've got a full house here, first of all, hello, everybody. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful week. I am so happy that you have come to join me on a Friday afternoon for Feel Good Friday. Um, but you guys know I've been struggling with the wiggle, right, with the audio for a while. <coughs> And it's been a challenge. So over in the group, I won't do it on the on the regular business page, but over in the group, later this afternoon, I'm gonna pop on with my new iPad and my new like microphone cord and test it out, okay? So you, you haven't seen the last of me today. You don't have to come and do that. I mean, it's it's literally only going to take me like three minutes just to make sure that the audio works. But I just want to give you a heads up that like, if you get a notification that I'm live again, that's all I'm doing. Okay. So if just one or two of you can can stop in and say, yes, the audio is good or no, the audio is bad. That's all I need. Okay. Just give me a, head, a heads up. All right. Let us get down to business, shall we? <laughs> all right. I'm going to adjust. Hold on. Give me a wiggle how we sound. Okay, just keep me keep me abreast of the situation, if you will. All right. I'm going to I'm going to bring you guys down a little bit. I feel like you're way high up today. Okay. So, just to kind of give you a little look at what I've got today. So, um I just have a piece of paper folded up here. It's just copy paper or not copy paper, but printer paper. Um I'm going to use this to squirt my patinas onto. So, I'm not going to use like an actual paint palette or anything like that. I just like to do it on a piece of paper and then I can just toss it cuz you only use a very tiny amount of the patinas. And as far as the patinas are concerned, you can see these are from Vintage. They are Ranger inks. They're good for all metals and they come in a variety of colors. Like you can get just about every color of the rainbow plus a entire line or an entire line of metals, metal colors as well. Okay. They're just super, super fun. The thing is though, is that they will literally stick to any metal. So a lot of times when I'm playing with patinas, if I'm going to get really messy or if I'm working on a larger piece, I take all my jewelry off just because I don't want to risk it. This stuff will stick. That's what it's for. It's it's made to stick to metal. So just be mindful of that. You might want to remove your jewelry before you play with these. Okay. Um, let's scroll back. Somebody has, oh yeah, Karen says she uses yogurt or sour cream lids. That's perfect because you can wipe them off. I love that. Um, hi, Jane. I'm rolling back to see, question, what is the difference between patina and alcohol ink? Okay, so that's a really, really good question. Um, and I'll answer it just as far as I can go with it because I'm not super knowledgeable about it, but as far as I know, patinas are considered semi-permanent, meaning that these are not water soluble. They, well, I mean, they're water soluble in the sense that you can rinse off your paintbrush, okay? But as far as once they dry on your metal, it's not going to come off if you get caught in a rainstorm. Like I wouldn't shower in them or swim with your metal pieces, but for the most part, it's, it's going to be stuck there for a while. Alcohol ink, let me grab one. Alcohol inks are pretty similar in that um, once once they're there, they're pretty stuck. However, alcohol inks can be altered with the addition of alcohol, which makes these a great medium for um, not just metal, but I like to paint with tile or paint onto tile with my alcohol inks. So you can take your alcohol inks and let's just pretend for a second that this is my piece of tile. I take my alcohol inks in a whole bunch of different colors and just drop it down, right? Just drop, 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 drop in different colors. And then you can come in with an alcohol wipe, an alcohol spray, or a paintbrush that's filled with alcohol, and you can literally move the colors around and swirl them like watercolors. But you can only do it with alcohol. So you have to have, you know, you've got to have your alcohol. That being said, you can also remove this with alcohol. So if you were to mess up and you decided you hated it, you can literally wipe everything off with alcohol and start again. So they're not, they're not super permanent. However, they do work on metal and seem to be pretty permanent on metal unless you really go at them with some alcohol. Um, 
<coughs> but can be used on other things. Like I said, you can use these on paper. They're a special alcohol ink paper. You can use them on um, really any kind of paper that you that you want. You can just treat it the same way that you do paint. Um, but you absolutely can really play around and create patterns with this. Whereas with the patinas, you're really dealing with more like a paint as in like what you would think of like, the, it's gonna be treated the same way that like an acrylic paint would be. Where once you put your color down, you, you really don't have much time to move it around, you know, um, unless you go at it with like some paint thinner. So I hope that's answered. Um, the, the patinas are, um, they're, they're solid. Whereas alcohol inks, the color you're going to get with an alcohol ink is going to be transparent, um, translucent, what have you. It's more of like a stained glass effect, whereas a patina is more like just a solid coat of paint. So there you go. I hope I've given you a little insight into those. I know there's probably more differences than that, but just right off the top of my head, that's what, um, that's what you get. Oh my gosh, Karen says, don't wet your brush with patina paints. You will get little paint boogers. We don't want paint boogers. No paint boogers are allowed. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Um, as far as a paintbrush is concerned, I'm just going to use a regular paintbrush, um, but you can use, uh, you don't have to use a paintbrush at all. You can use your finger, you can use, um, you can use paper towels, you can use cotton swabs, which a lot of times if I'm going to be just doing, you know, kind of modelly looking paint onto a piece of metal, a lot of times I forego the paintbrush and just use a, um, a Q-tip, you know, or a cotton swab for that just because, you know, I'm not really interested in getting like super precise painting. Um, another thing I do have here is my reliefing block and all that your reliefing block is going to do is it's going to take off that top layer of color either to your brass piece so you can shine it up or it's going to take the top layer of the paint off. So you put your patina paints in there and then you hit it with the reliefing block. It's going to bring up the raised pieces of the metal and the paint's going to stay in the recesses, which is super fun too. So um, I've got this on hand, but you don't have to have this guy. And you can see how it takes off. It takes off that top coating of the brass and it gives it that real shiny look to it. You can see. Okay, so you're going to use this um, with your, your paints. And you can use this with the patinas and with the alcohol inks to get that raised look. Um, let's see. Jane says, do you know if the percentage of alcohol makes a difference, isopropyl or rubbing alcohol? You know what? I don't know. I don't know. That's a really good question. We need to, we need to look that up. If somebody wants to find out and let us know, that would be awesome. Or I can look it up afterwards and let you guys know. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I have both and it's been such a long time since I've used the alcohol inks. I can't remember which one it is that I needed to use. So yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. All right. Um, Rosanna says either will work. The regular stuff you buy at the store will work. Oh, that's good to know. So there we go. We got an answer. Got an answer. Cool. So here's what I was thinking. Like I said, I got two of these in case we mess up one. Okay. And I've got these little swallows. They're both different colors, um, which they can be painted too, but I don't know. I felt like if we painted the background, then the bird is really going to pop more. I just don't know which bird. <laughs> so, oh no, oh no, let's paint, let's play, let's play. So here's our piece and here is our little patinas. I'm going to start with this really beautiful turquoise color. Just shake it up and it really does not take a lot, you guys. Like these will last you forever. That tiny, tiny amount that I've got there, that's way more than enough to coat this entire piece. Um, so just dry brush, like Karen said, you don't want to go at this with a wet brush at all. So just a dry brush and then you just want to paint it on. And you can paint the entire piece if you want to. You can paint just part of the piece if you want to. It, it's totally up to you. And every one of these is gonna look different, which I, I love that too. So like no two pieces are gonna be the same, even if you try, you know? Even if you try. But it's just, it's so fun to me to be able to add paint into jewelry making. Um, 
I, I love all kinds of mixed media art and you guys know my Halloween stuff. I do a lot of painting. So it's fun to, to get to add this in. This stuff dries really, really quickly. Um, Karen says, can you use acrylic paints? I don't recommend it just for the fact that um, the patinas are specifically designed to go onto metal um, and, and be pretty permanent, whereas the acrylics tend to roll and chip on metal. That's just from my experience. Um, you can try, but I just have not ever had really good luck with that. Um, but yeah, you're, you're certainly welcome to give it a try and see. I just wouldn't do it on a piece that, um, you know, you spent a lot of money on. Like these, these brass pieces that I have were super inexpensive, so it's okay if I mess them up. You know what I mean? So definitely, definitely practice. You don't have to. No, Angela says you don't have to seal patina paints. You do not. You can. There is a sealer for them, but you, you don't. You do not have to seal them with anything if you don't want to. Um, they don't need it. As long as you're not going to wear this every single day of your life or leave it out in the rain or leave it in the sunshine, it's going to last. It really, it really will last a very, very long time. All right. So just kind of hitting the edges just a little bit with the patinas. So the patina paints, you guys, originally these were created to create the natural uh, look of patina, which is not to be confused with patina paints. Um, this is to fake a, a natural process that actually happens on metals. You've seen where, um, you know, a metal will start to rust and depending on kind of the chemical makeup of that metal, what kind of metal it is and so forth, the rust that will happen over time will be in like a blue green color a green color kind of a coppery red color and that's what the patina paints were originally created for was to mimic the look of aging that happens naturally to um, pieces so you could fake it without having to wait you know 200 years not 200 years I'm exaggerating but you know to to keep from having to wait for a piece to naturally age so um, it's kind of cheating a little bit to be completely honest with you but it's so fun so who cares <laughs> and you actually can um, you can patina with heat as well um, you know there are other chemical means of patina ing or aging metals um, you know you can torch them of course um, but if that's you know if that's outside of your wheelhouse then why not just pick up the paints and and use the paints i do know some people in the industry that don't like the paints for that reason because they're like oh that's cheating why would you do that um but to me it's so easy and they come in such a wide variety of colors my question is why wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> you know, why wouldn't you? So I'm just adding a little of this, this kind of bronzy color back on here, which I, I seems kind of counterproductive. <laughs> Maybe that was a bad choice. I don't know. Let's add more blue. I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting a little too much there. I don't know. I like to play with it and just kind of mix it up and see what happens. Like that's pretty all by itself, right? So I'm going to leave it just like that move the patina out of the way and then I'm going to hit it with the reliefing block just so that you can kind of see what happens. Um, the color that's down in there will stay down and then the raised surfaces, you can take a little bit of the paint off of the raised surface or a lot. It's just totally up to you and it ha it's up to, see how that, see how that makes the shine kind of in the spokes of the wheel, um, but it's up to you. <laughs> One says cheating and jewelry making. How is that even a thing? I know, right? <laughs> it's not cheating. It's not cheating at all. Look how pretty. I like it. I like it. And I mean, literally, if that took, I mean, not to say that, you know, that <laughs> I don't have any talent, but I mean, it didn't take any talent to do that, right? I mean, I just. I just popped some paint on there, you know, and just made it kind of camouflagey looking. Um, 
<laughs> you don't have to be a skilled painter, I guess is what I'm trying to say, okay? You don't have to, you know, you don't have to be able to paint intricate designs. If you wanted to get in there with your tiny little paintbrushes and paint every single little piece, you totally could. But when you are trying to make it look like it actually aged, like the aging process of the metals does not happen, you know, in individual little little designs of the piece. So, I mean, you can do it either way, right? You can, you can paint amazing pictures with the patina paints, or you can use it in the traditional sense, which is kind of what I've done here with the traditional colors to make it look like aged metal. So, there you go. Um, now, I'm going to lay one of these one of these birds on top. So that looks good. I like that one, right? It definitely makes the bird stand out a bit more. So there's that or there's the bright. And it's so hard, so hard to tell like which one I like more. I actually think I like the shape of this bird, this little swallow more than this one. Um, but I like the color of this one. I don't know. Yeah, Eve says blob some on and wipe it off. Easy peasy. Yeah, I, patina paints are fun, guys. They're super fun. I'm going to use this one, I think. I think that looks pretty. I don't know. I'm feeling this one, I think. I just really enjoy the the shape of this one. He just, to me, kind of reminds me of like traditional tattoos. You know, the swallows that are in traditional like sailor tattoos. That's, that's more the shape of this guy. And I think that's kind of why I like it. So, all right, that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna use a, a jump ring here to put this on there. I'm not using anything crazy hard. Where are my tools today? All right, so. I'm just going to use one of the jump rings from that little findings kit. And guys, the jump rings, every bit of the metal, the jump rings, the chain, everything that you use, you can put patina paint on, right? If you have chain, you can make it purple chain. You can make it blue chain. You can make it red chain. Like you can put patina paints on anything, anything and everything that's metal. And probably more than just metal, but I mean, how fun is it to be able to put it on metal? All right, so I've attached our little bird, and our centerpiece is ready to go. I may, I may do a couple of wire wrapped little beads to hang here after we put this together, like after we put our necklace part together. But for the most part, that's going to be our centerpiece. So I'm gonna, let's see, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna sit him to the side. I'm gonna bring in our chain and I'm gonna attach it. So I've got two pieces of this chain. The chain has kind of long oval links to it. Um, and I'm not using really long pieces of chain. I believe this is about, about 15 inches. No, couldn't possibly be. Let's get out the ruler. <laughs> that would be um, a foot. <laughs> So well, I've got two 12 inch pieces of chain here <clears throat> and I'm just going to use a larger jump ring for the center. I'm going to attach here. I'm going to thread on our center piece and attach here. Okay. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could call it a day and be like, I'm done. I've got a really cool piece of jewelry, which you do. Um, but you guys know I got to add dangles and it's feel good Friday. So I'm going to do dangles because they feel good. <laughs> I like it. All right. I am going to lay out my chain though, because I don't want to add dangles to every single link. I'm going to alternate and do every other link here. And I'm just going to use some antique brass head pins. Uh, probably need some more jump rings too. And I have these little, these little antique brass ball beads with other things mixed in here. So just ignore those things. But what I'm looking for are just the little beads. I'm gonna pop those on the bottom. So let me show you uh, kind of what I'm, what I'm going for here. Let me grab some of my chips, dump those out. Okay, so the look I'm going for is I'm going to use a, a head pin. I'm going to thread on one of the little antique 
brass ball beads. That just kind of gives it the look of a ball head pin, which I don't have. So I'm kind of faking it, right? Again, cheating and jewelry, which... <laughs> And then I'm just going to drop on like, I don't know, three or four chip beads. And my chips are kind of medium sized. They're not super huge. I do have some bigger pieces, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep it pretty small actually. And do I want two or one or I mean three. I think I'm going to go with the three. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a wrapped loop. Okay. So chain nose pliers. Coming in with the round nose pliers, taking the wire up and over, rolling the pliers out of the way, taking the wire over to the other side, and then I'm going to wire wrap in that space between. My eye or my head pins are very, very stiff. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to trim off. Okay, and I'm going to add that to our chain here. And let's see, do I want to start right there or do I want to start right here? I think I'm going to back up away from the pendant just a little bit. Once I put it on the bust, then I'll be able to see if there's actually room for one like right in this area here. But for now, since it's just laying flat, I'm going to leave it just like it is. And I'm going to get us some jump rings here. I'm going to use jump rings to attach these instead of just wire wrapping them directly to the chain. Um, you can if you want to. It's totally up to you. I do however recommend doing this while your your chain is laying flat. You guys are talking about tacos and I'm like I'm starving. I just ate lunch but for whatever reason like I don't know today like my stomach is a black hole and I ate and it just disappeared now my stomach's growling again I want a taco <laughs> I want a taco that sounds good okay so there's that guy all right we're just gonna repeat that and do one on the other side I'm just gonna do a couple of these Right? I'm not going to fill up the entire chain because I don't need it, but I do want these pretty, you know, bead accents here in the front. So again, just going to load up my head pin nachos. Mmm, yum. You guys, I miss, I miss being, I miss fun, like being in person fun. Like, I love ballpark nachos. Like, when you go to the ballpark for either, like, a baseball game or, like, football. Like, it's the worst nacho cheese in the whole world. But when you're at the ballpark, it's, like, the best nacho cheese in the world. I miss that. <laughs> it's just not the same to make your own nachos in the microwave. Anybody else agree with me on that one? <laughs> I miss ballpark nachos. It's like movie theater popcorn. Like no matter if you make your popcorn in the microwave or you have an air popper, like it's just not the same as like popcorn that you get from the movie theater. Oh my gosh, now you're talking about burritos. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. I'm starving. Somebody ordered me some Grubhub. <laughs> I tip really well. <laughs> It is cheese whiz, <laughs> which is just, you know, but if you, if you get cheese whiz at home and you heat it up in your microwave, it's just not the same. It doesn't come in with those little containers with the little round chips and you don't get the yell and the scream of the crowd and the smell and the air. Yeah, it's just not the same. <laughs> it's an experience, right? Nachos from the ballpark is an experience. It's not just about the nachos. Okay, so <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four and five. <laughs> Cheese whiz, yep. All right, so there, now we're on a roll. We're rocking and rolling here. I'm gonna do a few more of those. Fritos nacho cheese. I'm not much of a Fritos person. 
do you guys have um you guys have what's the name of that place oh, petros like it's a it's a restaurant was well, like a fast food place but it's also like a thing like a petro so where you you take nacho cheese or like fritos not nacho cheese but fritos and you put it in the bottom of a bowl and then you put your chili over the top of it and then you put all of your stuff plastic cheese is its own food group i totally agree 100 percent wanda um but anyway <laughs> petro you put your fritos on the bottom and then you fill it up like you you know i don't know like you treat your 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 fritos like a loaded baked potato i guess you know with your chili and that whole bit <sighs> people love that around here like in East Tennessee that's a that's a big thing and so a lot of times for like football games and stuff Petro's is the way to go whether you make them yourself or you get them from the fast food place oh no why would you ever why would you <laughs> and this is just my opinion i and I realize I am in the minority here with this opinion because people love them but I'm like why would you ever put Fritos in your chili like why would you ever do that to chili chili is so good by itself <laughs> Like, I don't want to junk up my chili with chips and not even, like, good chips. Like, the only way I like Fritos is if they are, like, you know, slathered in salt and extra flavoring, like chili cheese flavor, which is pretty silly considering what I just said. Um, <laughs> or barbecue. <laughs> oh... Petros were invented for when the World's Fair was in Knoxville in 1982. That's that, really, Jane, I did not know that. Um, that's pretty cool. Guys, I actually went to the World's Fair in 1982. Believe it or not, um, I was, <laughs> I was just a baby. I was a little baby. And um, there are pictures of me there in one of those backpacks. My mom had me carried in a little backpack. <laughs> So I remember nothing about the World's Fair, but I was there and I get to say that I was there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not a Petro's kind of person because I don't like to mix my foods like that. Like I don't want my chips and my chili touching each other. <laughs> and then apparently when you go further to the, um, the West a little bit, there's this stuff called Streamline Chili. And, and it's chili with macaroni or macaroni noodles or spaghetti noodles. And I really don't understand that. Like for somebody who eats snacks from all over the world, that's one thing I just, I, I don't understand. Why, why are you doing these things to chili? <laughs> what did chili ever do to you? <laughs> uh, what a strange conversation I'm having today. Yeah, the Fritos give the chili a crunch. I understand, but like, I don't want my chili crunchy. <laughs> I want my chili to be smooth and soupy like chili. <laughs> Cincinnati, Cincinnati chili. Is Cincinnati chili and Skyline chili the, the same thing? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's the same thing or not, but I have, I have, a, um, I have a, a, a very, very good friend from Cincinnati. And he's always talking about that. <laughs> like why why would you eat that it just sounds disturbing to me but i mean i i i don't know so i've never had it i've never even seen it so i don't know <laughs> i could be completely wrong and be missing out on like one of the greatest foods ever but who knows skyline is the restaurant oh i had no idea not i love it you guys know so much <laughs> I don't get out much, so <laughs> you guys are giving me my education today. How are we feeling about the necklace so far? Do you like the addition of the um, of the chip beads to it? So my suggestion, if you're going to use a different color chip bead, is to use a different color of the patina, which, you know, the patina paints come in such a wide rainbow of choices that there is, there's going to be a patina paint that will match. I really screwed that jump ring up. Um, so you could, you could do this in any color that you wanted to. And you don't have to use like the same kinds of pieces that I'm using here. Any of the brass pieces that you've got in your collection are going to work. Um, this is really just kind of a simple, fun design, something that I wanted to make. I'm sharing with you guys. Um, but ultimately you could, you could do this so many different other things. 
so I'm just gonna keep going here yeah I'm using head pins but I am um, I'm dropping a ball bead on the bottom of them so that it looks like a head pin with a ball <laughs> I'm, ch I'm all about cheating today I'm cheating and I'm doing wrapped loops but you could you could absolutely do you know just just simple loops <clears throat> I feel like this is a good feel good Friday piece, right? Because it's not a lot. There's not like, we're not doing crazy techniques. We played with some paint and we're putting together a project that I feel like you guys are probably, you know, you probably got the pieces or similar things in your stash to play with. So if you wanted, you could very easily recreate something like this with your own stuff, or I can give you the link once I get finished here to Amazon and, um, you guys can grab some of these on your own. They were really inexpensive, the the brass pieces that I got, and I got a ton of them, so I, I have brass pieces for days. Um, just don't expect them to be like crazy insane quality, okay? They are very thin, but when it comes to using your brass pieces, like your filigree pieces for wrapping around stones and stuff, that's what you want. You want it to be very malleable, um, so just keep that just keep that in mind. You definitely can get, you know, super high quality ones like the bird here from Vintage, so. Stephanie says she doesn't have this type of supplies in her stash. Well, you know, you could you you don't have to use chip beads, right? You don't have to use chip beads at all. I'm guessing you probably have some chain. I might be wrong, but I'm guessing you probably have some chain. So you could use chain and any beads that you wanted to. And if you don't have your own brass pieces here, you can just layer whatever other focals you've got, right? If you've got some a pretty um, pendant that you haven't used, this is just an easy way. I feel like a lot of times, you know, we buy, or at least from my experience, I buy pendants when I see them because I fall in love with them. And a lot of times they stay in my stash and I never use them because I can never come up with a piece of jewelry to build around them that I feel like justifies how beautiful the piece is. So a lot of times they never get turned into jewelry. And I, I think I'm, at least for me, I feel like I'm overthinking it. So just a little bit of chain and a couple of beads in the same color scheme as your your favorite pendant is really all you need you know just to 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 get that pendant out of the drawer wherever it is you're keeping it and turn it into something beautiful so you can enjoy it it doesn't have to be like a huge elaborate design right um let's see jessica says is the bird from vintage it is and i don't know if i got the bird in a one of their monthly boxes or if it came um if it came from you remember when right at the beginning of quarantine um vintage sent out free little kits of goodies he may have come in that because i i truthfully haven't ordered anything from vintage in a long time so um i'm not real sure how i came i came into possession of the bird <laughs> Okay, we've got three on either side. You know, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to do I'm going to do five. So I'm going to do two more on each side, okay? And then we'll stop. I'll put the um I'll put the findings on the end of this and we'll look at it hanging and see what it looks like. But I like it. I think it looks good. Yes, Wanda said, I learned today how to use chip beads, stack them like Pringles. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm telling you, I struggle with chip beads and I've got a bazillion. I mean, if that bag that I showed you was any indication, like that's just in one color. I've got so many chip beads and I, I never know what to do with them ever. So I thought this was a good little good little way to use up at least some of them. I mean, we're definitely not using a ton by any means, but but again, it doesn't have to be chip beads. You could do round beads like this and it would still look awesome. So, oh, I forgot the little, I did on this one too. <laughs> That's what I get for talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. So put the ball on the bottom before you stack your beads up if you want it to have that 
extra pop of antique brass. <clears throat> Rita says she uses a lot of chip beads in her design. Rita, post some pictures of us for the group um, of your design so that we can get some inspiration and see what you're doing with your chip beads. Um, I know I'm not the only one, particularly those of you who have followed me from JTV. I don't know if JTV still does it because I don't, I don't keep up with JTV at all. Um, but there was a time where it seemed like every show they had chip beads. And so I feel like there are some of us who have like a, a lifetime supply of chip beads <laughs> from that. <laughs> so, um, you know, any, any inspiration for using chip beads, you guys post it. Cause I want to know what you guys are doing with yours. I need to use mine up. They still do it. <laughs> Something about that does not surprise me. I'm not surprised. I just, um, I, I typically don't, um, you know, talk about that very much. Um, and I used to not even say the company's name out loud, but you know, I've made peace. <laughs> Oh yeah, Rosanna says she uses her chip beads in Tree of Life. I do too. That's such a good way to use them up. And guys, speaking of, um, <clears throat> I actually am doing a Tree of Life pendant in one of my Michael's virtual classes in February. So if you're interested in seeing a Tree of Life pendant, um, we're going to do one over on the virtual classes. Uh, I think that it, I think it's on the roster already. I'm not sure, but if you go over to the Michaels website um, and look, it's there somewhere. The class that I'm doing tomorrow, just as a reminder for those of you who want to come and hang out tomorrow, tomorrow's class is a bracelet project using, we're just doing wrapped loops, but we're using some twisted artistic wire. It's a super easy project, but the results are really, really pretty. So if you want to come hang out for the, vi the virtual, oh my gosh, I'm mixing all my words together, virtual Michael's class tomorrow, that's at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's completely free. Um, just come in and hang out. It's a little bit different because I don't um, I don't do any of the interaction like we do here, but it's still a free project and um, you know it's just a fun way to spend an afternoon if you if you're looking for something to do on a Saturday. Um, so my classes will alternate between Saturdays and Wednesdays. So for this week's class, last week it was on a Wednesday, this week it's on a Saturday. All right, so now I'm just going to attach the rest of these. And I've got some little red beads here. I'm going to I'm going to lay those out here in just a second and you guys kind of help me decide whether or not I should add them or not. Um I was just thinking like maybe to the center of the pendant, maybe to or not to the center of it, but to add a couple of little little hang beads here, little dangles in a pop of red. I don't know. I don't know because I'm one of those people who I'm, I really like red and turquoise together, but sometimes it doesn't work. So since I hadn't already made this project, I figured we would, we could, we could make that choice together. I can't wait to see this hanging. I think it's going to be really cool. And not hard at all, right? I mean, we just doing some little wire wraps and that's all. And you don't even have to do it that way. You can just do simple loops. I like easy projects. I think it's fun to end our week with an easy project, right? You get bombarded with so many projects. Every single one of these are is off. Mm, did you see that? <laughs> you see? But we get bombarded with so much information. There are so many Facebook Lives and so many projects all week long that it's, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun to end your week on like a, oh, I can just easy peasy a piece of jewelry, you know, it's not anything super hard and, and it still looks good. I'm going to have to adjust to these. I apologize, guys. I went up one too far. So goes on that one. Just have to adjust them over one each, which is okay. And again, that's that's part of that's part of doing it on a live and part of working with chain. So no problems. That is part of the reason though that I like to use chain that has a little bit bigger of a link because um, it's much easier to see when you've accidentally at attached things in the wrong place. It's easier to open and close the jump rings. You know, you, you're not you're not fighting nearly as as hard <laughs> against the chain when you're working. Is that whoops, hold on. Um, Sharon says, can I provide the link for the Michaels workshop? I can. Um, and I believe that actually Joan has posted over in the Facebook group, um, links to that. If she, uh, I, I'm pretty sure she has. Um, if she, if she didn't though, we definitely can post that so that you can, you can go and sign up for that. Um, cause I would, I would love to have you guys there. try to keep that schedule kind of updated so that you guys know and it's okay if if you if you sign up for a class and you can't make it like you don't have to cancel or anything it's okay if you don't show up um, and that being said you um you can watch it on the replay instead of it being Facebook live though you watch the replay over on the Michaels YouTube channel so you can watch you know later on if you want to um, that way and it's you know it's still it's still free which is cool and they so far they got the last one that I did it was it was uploaded to the YouTube channel by the end of the day so I don't know how that is on the weekends it might not be posted until Monday on the YouTube channel but um, they were really quick about getting it onto the YouTube channel after the class was over so okay so now I can be done I think this is awesome like it is I was just like curious what it would look like if I added like two little pops of red two little dangles in the middle like up here on this jump ring but now I'm thinking maybe not originally in my mind I liked that idea but I'm thinking it doesn't really need it so I think I'm going to not do it. <laughs> I think I've changed my mind. I'm not going to add the red to that. I'm just going to add the findings to the end of this chain and I'm going to put it on a bust and we're going to take a look at it because why not? <laughs> because we're done and it's Feel Good Friday and we're going to move on to other things. So got my two jump rings here. Let me grab a clasp. Okay. Oh yeah, I could put it down by the beak and it would look like he had like little cherries or something in his mouth. That's a cute idea. I like that. All right, so that's it for that. I'm gonna grab the bust and put it on this and you guys can see what it looks like hanging because it looks, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping it looks really good hanging up here. Let's see, let me put it on the bust and then I'll turn you guys around. All right, I'm gonna turn you around. How long is the chain? So the chain pieces are, hang on, let me wiggle. All right, hope the audio is okay, you guys. So the chain pieces were um, 12 inches each. 
and you can adjust that however you want it to with the pendant like kind of with the style i want it to be more up here than to be a long necklace i really want it to be like in the general you know chest area upper chest i don't want it to be like a choker choker but i do want the pendant to be up here just because the the filigree i feel like is going to get lost in your clothing if you make it a really long necklace um to avoid that from happening oddly enough if you're going to make it a long necklace and you don't want to lose the filigree you add a tassel to the bottom of it i know that seems like kind of weird how does adding something to it change that but it does it it definitely changes it and it it draws length here so it's a short it's all kind of short and up in this area if you want it to be a long necklace and you don't want it to disappear in your clothing you have to elongate the pendant portion so add some sort of tassel or other element to the bottom here that's how you would make that adjustment but that's easy to do right that's an easy adjustment to make i don't know if it needs an extra bead dangle in between here i'm afraid that if i did add an extra bead dangle in between there on either side that it would take away from the pendant i don't know though the only way to know that really is to actually do it put it on there take a look at it and then decide whether or not to um, keep it or lose it right that's why working on a bust is so much different than working on a flat surface things look so different so if you don't have a necklace bust or at least something that you can put your necklaces onto after you've worked on them flat I definitely recommend getting a bust or something of that nature to have in your your work area because things look so different when they're actually hanging like and letting gravity do its thing so there you go you guys quick and easy feel good friday i think it turned out i think it turned out really well right i hadn't I hadn't executed it we were just putting it together just as fun to see what would happen and i think it turned out really well i like it i'm gonna i'm gonna give a try to this whole side here but i'm thinking it's probably not gonna need it um but yeah i hope you guys have liked this one it was fun it was it's always fun to get the patinas out and to use them on things um so if you guys want to see more patina paint projects um you know let me know because we can we can find ways i'll post the links i have an affiliate link with um with amazon so i'll post that link you don't have to use it if you don't want to just know that if you do i make a small commission it is not very much my affiliate um, link with amazon is very very small but i mean you know after a while it does tend to add up so i'll post those links just give me a few minutes i usually when i stop here i let the dogs out i take care of a couple of other things then i'll come and post the links for you so it won't be immediate but i will you know within the next hour have those links available for you guys if you want to use them if not at least it's going to kind of show you what is available on amazon if you're looking to get some brass pieces that are inexpensive to mix with maybe some more expensive ones okay all right that's it for feel good friday i hope i made you feel good i hope you had a good time and that i've inspired you to go be creative for the rest of your friday and throughout the rest of your weekend um let's see yes you can join me at 4 p.m eastern time over on the jewel loom group we're going to be using the original jewel room what jewel loom um to create some fun things just very relaxed and casual and um, then you can catch me tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time for the virtual Michaels classes. If not, you guys, you know you can catch me right here on Tuesday at 1 p.m. with our Technique Tuesday. Yes, I'm starving too, Paula. I'm, I'm so hungry after all of the things you guys have talked about. So I'm going to go grab a snack and I will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Love you. Bye.